Hey, good morning. It's Monday the 13th, about 8 a.m. in Thailand. Let's start with gold. We had this big bearish engulfing candle in gold on the daily chart, followed by the big red candle just to confirm the negativity. This was a little bear flag, which I spotted. And then we had another bearish engulfing candle on Thursday. So there really are quite a lot of negative signals in gold. Bearish engulfing candle followed by a doji. A doji is a little, little bit more of a neutral candle, but certainly no reason to buy gold that I can see from this chart. Black line is a 50 day moving average. So at the moment it's holding after the break of the bear flag. We'll have a look at that bear flag on a short term chart in a minute. But a convincing break below the 50 day moving average, which is currently at 1857. Last week's low at 1852. So obviously a break below them take us down further, probably looking at 1830, 1825 as the next stop, as you can see from the fib level on my chart here and the price action with the swing high here swing low there, backs up that sort of 1830, 1825 level as the next target for gold on the downside this week. Just remember that gold still has this double top pattern. No, it didn't play out because we didn't break below the, uh, this is the monthly chart for gold. You can see that we, we made a new high in February and obviously we've collapsed since then. It'd be interesting to see if we close the month below 1823, that would leave a bearish engulfing candle on the monthly chart. And uh, we've already got them as you saw on the daily chart. And indeed, we've got one on the weekly chart from the week before we had this big, big bearish engulfing candle. But the doji doesn't negate the bearish engulfing candle. This still does look like we have pressure to the downside in gold. Stochastic at the bottom of the weekly charts turn lower and head down. And if you look at my beautiful little bear flag on the one hour chart, you can see how nicely that played out. Trend lines were beautiful. As soon as we broke, collapsed, we even got the retest. How nice. Retest of the trend line for a sell opportunity on Friday, just to emphasize the strength of that resistance level, at the lower trend line of the bear flag, we had the 100 hour moving average. So nice, easy sale there. The best perspective to see what's going on in silver is to look at the weekly chart. We're in a downward channel basically through the whole of 2021 and 2022. We retested the upper trend line of that two year channel this month. Huge bearish engulfing candle for silver two weeks ago, small red bodied candle on the weekly chart for last week, just continuing that move to the downside, which is obviously exactly as we expected it to be. And on the daily chart, well, another bearish engulfing candle on Thursday. So it's all looking pretty negative for silver as well. Not dissimilar to the gold chart, except the fact that we've been trading sideways for such a long period of time before we broke this lower trend line. And again, that was another sell signal after this rather negative candle that we had big red candle broke through the trend line at three dojis just to consolidate the severe move to the downside. Then another bearish engulfing candle. Now another doji. We've got the 100 day moving average coming in in silver at 2180. So break below 2180 is the sell signal in silver for this week. Resistance levels are on your report. So I'm not going to go into those right now. Oil is a lot more tricky. Only been going sideways since December. So we've had at least two and a half months of sideways action. I don't like sideways action, makes it difficult. Some of the levels have worked quite well, actually. The trend line here goes back to May 22, comes in at around 80 and a half. We've got the 100 day moving average at 81. So that 80 and a half, 81 area is going to be strong resistance. If we keep going, we've got really strong resistance this week in oil at uh, 82.50, 83.00. That is the level that the bulls have to beat if they're going to get a control of a WTI crude. And that's it for the three commodities that I cover. I'm now going to go and record some videos on the Forex and the stock markets. Good luck if you're trading this week. I'd love to hear your comments and read the offers that I've got in the description box for you. I'm sure you're going to learn.